Welcome to the Fix Your Sciatica podcast, where we meet with experts and clients and discuss how to manage your sciatica and low back pain without the use of medications or surgery. I'm your host, Dr. Ashley Mack, and I'm a physical therapist as well as the founder of iFixYourSciatica.com, a go-to resource for pain management. If you're joining us for the first time, thank you for listening. And if you are tuning in again, welcome back. And lastly, if you find today's episode or any of these episodes of this podcast to be helpful or insightful, please follow and rate this podcast on whatever platform you're using. The more followers and ratings we get, the more we can help people like you. And without further ado, let's get started. I often work with clients who've worked with other practitioners, and let's just say I'm often the last resort that people go to when they fail to achieve sciatic pain relief. In order for us to maximize our time together, I actually ask my clients if they can make a list of the exercises that were provided by the previous professionals. This gives me an opportunity to do two things, eliminate what isn't working and modify the positions and stretches that are actually helpful for them. Now, I've been seeing a lot of core strengthening recently, and I wanted to take the opportunity today in this episode to really clear the air on the effectiveness of core strengthening exercises and sciatica pain. The reason being is that core strengthening is often misused and poorly applied to people experiencing pain, and you often find countless articles on the best core exercises to reduce sciatica pain. But first, what are core exercises? Now, I am talking about the dead bugs, planks, side planks, superman or superwoman holds, bird dogs, and others that target the quote-unquote core. But we also have to define what the core is. And in essence, it is the area between your shoulders and hips. It's going to consist of your ab muscles and your abdominal muscles, as well as your back muscles. Now, after receiving the list of exercises from my new clients, I often ask them if these exercises are in fact effective. And most responses that I get are, well, they're okay, but I'm still in pain or they're not helping at all and I still experience pain at night. And the reality is that this truly bothers me because if you've been listening to this podcast, then you know the first priority in sciatica pain relief is to reduce the pain which means that every action being done, whether it be a stretch, an exercise, or a position, should actually be focused on reducing the pain so that you can live your life without pain and you can live happily. And if someone's been doing core strengthening exercises for weeks with no relief, I hate to reveal the truth, but they actually just wasted their time. But hear me out. Because my goal of today's episode is to inform and empower you, the listener, to take charge of your recovery. You need to be aware as to why you're being prescribed your core strengthening exercises or your exercises in general, and what to do if these exercises are not working for you. And if you're currently under the care of a clinician or professional, Tell them that you're also trying to learn about your condition, sciatica, and your goal is to try to understand so that you can live free from this pain. Share your findings with them. Their response is actually going to tell you whether or not they know what they are doing to help you. However, I do warn everyone that if they're trying to do their own research, you need to be aware of contradicting information. So focus on what is going to help you. So let's get into it, right? And let's talk about core strength and sciatica pain. Now, there are three main purposes for core strength. The first one is to initiate movement, aka force production. Two is to prevent motion, also known as stability. And then the third one is going to be enhancing control, also known as coordination. We're actually going to get a little bit more in depth about what these functions truly mean in about a minute. But before we move on, we have to revisit the question, what is sciatica? The full explanation of sciatica is actually found in the show notes of today, uh, linking to another episode. But in short, sciatica pain is irritation along the sciatic nerve. That's it. This irritation can be caused by a herniated disc, posture dysfunction, arthritis, stenosis, a term called spondylolisthesis, and a lot of other things. So the diagnosis 
of pain along the sciatic nerve does not indicate the cause of the pain. And the truth is, is that the cause of sciatica pain will actually correspond with a set of specific exercises and positions that will help. If pain is influenced by movement or position, it is going to be more so related to a mechanical issue. If not, then something else can actually be causing the pain and would actually require the further medical follow-up and clearance from a physician. We need to make sure that we're ruling out red flags. The people that I work with specifically are dealing with mechanical-based sciatica pain, and that means that their pain is influenced by movement and position. Now, if you look into the research, there is actually no scientific data supporting the use of core exercises, core strengthening exercises to treat sciatica pain. I did come across, however, three studies conducted over the past 10 years that have actually concluded that core specific exercises um, can actually help with short-term pain relief of non-specific low back pain as compared to general exercise. So again, there's research showing that there are non, uh, sorry, there's research that has shown that general core strength exercises can help out on the short-term basis for non-specific low back pain. And the link for the three articles are actually found in today's show notes. The purpose of me sharing this information with you is to not necessarily disparage a clinician or your current strength routine, your current core strength routine, but to spark your curiosity and to understand why are these exercises in your program in the first place? Ultimately, you came here to find out if core strengthening is going to fix your sciatica. And the answer is that it dot, 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 is that it depends. And it depends on these factors related to the purpose of what core strength has to fulfill. The purposes we have to ask, is the weakness in your core actually causing you pain? Is it due to failure to initiate movement? Is it due to a failure to prevent motion? Is it because of poor coordination in all your muscles and your body's doing too much? Now, if you answer yes to any of these questions, then yes, possibly, your core strength can be a limiting factor. However, if you don't know, there's only one way to find out, and it's to test and retest. Remember, when you're in pain, the priority is to, in fact, reduce your pain. And the cool thing about it is that, especially with sciatica pain, that there is going to be positions, exercises, and stretches that will reduce or completely eliminate your pain. Our job, which includes you, me, and your healthcare team, is to find the things that's actually going to provide you relief. All the exercises that don't help can be added later, but for now, we need to help you. So here's how you can determine if core strengthening exercises will in fact help you. We are going to take a quick break to tell you about our awesome new program called the Sciatica Protocol. If you don't have the time to see a professional, but are tired of trying to figure out this recovery on your own, then the Sciatica Protocol is for you. Harness the power of a knowledgeable physical therapist through your phone. It takes no more than seven minutes per day, and it is designed to help you recover as quickly as possible. Now, having an on-demand physical therapist can cost thousands plus hours of sessions. But with the Sciatica Protocol, you'll receive the same, if not better, customized care completely free. And why are we making this program free? Because I believe that everyone deserves to live free from pain without actually having cost be the biggest obstacle. It is simple to start and all you need to do is log into ifixyoursciatica.com forward slash the dash sciatica dash protocol and fill out the nine question quiz to begin. The link for the program is in today's show notes. And we go back to the purposes of core strengthening. And the first purpose of core strength is to actually initiate movement, to start motion. Core exercises that initiate movement include stuff like crunches, sit-ups, hanging knee raises, the active superman or superwoman list where you lift your chest and your thighs up off the floor. If you complete any of these exercises and your pain actually reduces as a result of these exercises, then 100% you would benefit from it. And that means that you should be doing more of that exercise. But then we have to ask the question, well, how much? How much should we be doing this? 
And you continue to do as much of these exercises until they stop working or if you're completely fixed. But if it truly isn't helping you by having no effect on your symptoms or making your pain worse, then it's time to move on to a different set of exercises. The second purpose of core strength is to prevent motion. Meaning that if you were to lift your arm and your core isn't tight, there can be excessive motion at the back and it can irritate your nerves because that's where your sciatic nerve exits. It exits your spine. So core exercises to prevent motion, which can include planks, weighted carries, static holds in any position, those can be helpful. But how do you know if this is going to be helpful? Now, just like before, you have to see if your pain is better. If your pain improves, then yes, absolutely. Do more planks and do more stability. Do it until you're red in the face because we know, because we've confirmed that planks and stability exercises have been helpful. But if it isn't helping you, again, if you're not getting relief or your pain is getting worse, then it's time to find something else. And then the third purpose of course strength, which often gets overlooked across all professions, is the concept of coordination of the core with movement. And that means that it has to contract at the right time. Your abs, your back has to contract at the right time and provide the right amount of tension to not only produce and control motion, but to enhance motion. Something akin to experiencing an increase in pain with motion of the spine. So exercises in this category include Turkish get-ups, mountain climbers, arm raises with a tight core. Again, the key to finding out if this is truly helpful for you is to evaluate your pain as a result of this exercise. And again, if it goes down or your pain goes away, then that is the exercise for you. If not, then again, we do need to investigate another solution for your pain problem. I've said this multiple times throughout today's episode, but I have to say it more because the reason why is that I believe that focusing on your pain and getting rid of it is going to be the most important points. How can you tell if an exercise is working? You can tell by looking at how you feel. If you feel better as a result, then the exercise is for you. Now, a common misconception amongst physical therapists, doctors, trainers, and chiropractors is that the movement they see in sciatica, if that the, the diagnosis that they see is sciatica, then they go straight to core strengthening. Okay, maybe they have you bend forward and touch your toes, move around, and then give you a grocery list of exercises that were quote unquote designed to strengthen the core, and then don't check back in until six weeks later and says, okay, it's time to reevaluate. And what's even worse about this is that when someone is experiencing pain at rest, which means sitting or laying down and not doing anything, and the pain exists, the professional would actually suggest that this pain is due to core weakness. But the reality is that at rest, the core doesn't really do anything. There's no spinal motions. There's no motion to initiate. There's no motion to stop. And there's no motion to enhance. And to me, it doesn't make any sense to create core strength for experiencing pain at a time when you're not moving one bit. So again, this episode isn't to disparage another professional, but to give you permission to ask, why are you, be given, why are you given these exercises in the first place? Remember, your relief is unique to you. And the solution to your pain is going to be dependent on what you respond best to. And if you were to take some action steps from today's episode, here they are. One, you have to find the positions that feel good and do more of them. Find the movements and stretches that feel good and do them often. The activities and motions that cause you pain or cause your pain to get worse you should modify or completely eliminate them from your day. And lastly, look at what you're doing throughout the day and see what is making your pain worse and what is making it better. I wish there was a one-size-fits-all solution to sciatica pain, but unfortunately, that's not the case. But the great news is treatment for sciatica pain can be simple, and you just need to look in the right places. And remember, you don't have to go through this alone. Ask for help and you'll be surprised by the results. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you got some help from today's podcast. And for more info, check us out at ifixyoursciatica.com. Have a fantastic and pain-free day. No patient-therapist relationship is formed by listening to this podcast. We are not providing medical advice, and all information should be confirmed by a medical provider.